which is brand new with Nux3. It's this server directory that can help us to create actually a backend and to deliver some uh, functionalities that are related actually to API. So on the official documentation, we can read that Nuxt automatically scans files inside the server directory, API, and server routes, and also server middleware directories to register API and server handlers with HMR support. So what we can see is that we can use the define event handler. And this handler can directly return JSON data, a promise, or use event node.res.end to send a response. All right, let's go directly into the subject and let's create a server API uh, folder. So here I'm going to create a new folder at the root of my application. I'm going to type server. And inside, because I, I want to follow the documentation, I'm going to create an API folder. So I'm going to click on there and here I got an API folder. So now if I follow um, what is written on the documentation, I understand that now I can create an endpoint. And which is cool is that when we look there, we see that later we will be able to fetch, okay, we will be able to fetch a root uh, slash API slash hello if we are creating a hello.ts file. So to start, we are going to copy paste this code and I'm going to create a simple hello.ts file. And there, there we go. So my server is running and we see that in my console, there is this Nitro build in uh, 400 milliseconds. What is this Nitro? We are going to see that just after. So I'm going to get back there and I'm going to open my application. So my application, it's, it's there. And if I type slash API slash hello, I'm supposed, okay, I'm supposed to have an endpoint that respond to me, actually what we wrote before. And when I type this, there we go. So now we see that our Next.js application, it's not only about front end, it's also about back end. We have an endpoint that is available and here that is answering to us a JSON object. So Next now has a role of a front end framework, but also of a back end framework. Actually, it was already the case before, but now we see that we can create our own endpoints and to do some back end. So let's just console log this event object that we've got there. So I'm going to open this. I'm going to get back and I'm going to type again on the uh, uh, endpoint. And we see here that we've got an H3 event object with a context Nitro and a big node object. And we can see there that we've got everything that we need uh, uh, to handle this node call. So, and we got also a res with a server response, etc., etc. So we can see that here we can uh, catch events going to this API folder and to this API, uh, actually hello.ts uh, endpoint on our API. Okay, but what is the point to have a backend on my frontend application? Well, it can be for many reasons that you would need a backend for your application. For instance, if you want to uh, provide some triggers or provide some action that you would do not on the front-end side but on the back-end side, now Next.js gives you the opportunity, exactly like Next.js, because we can do the same with Next.js, it gives you the opportunity to actually put some business logic on the back-end side and not on the front-end side. So how does it work? Well, basically on the server where you are going to host your Next.js application, it will also run the backend and it will provide the operation on the backend side and not on the client side. If you never did some backend before, I highly recommend you to dive deep into Node.js or at least a little bit to understand how we create backends. It's not that you have to learn everything about the backend to handle this part of Node.js. However, if you want to create some uh, triggers and some endpoints. However, it's always good to have some knowledge to start creating endpoints on a backend such as this one. If we continue to read the documentation, we see that we can make some call there and we are using a method with a dollar fetch. 
However, what is this dollar fetch? Well, we are going to see this in the course data fetching. But for now, I'm just going to copy this code there and I'm going to get back to my application. So on the front end side, and I'm going to open my console. And what I'm going to do, I'm going just to copy paste this code. So I'm going to get back there. I'm going to go on index. And up there, I still have my content doc, which is there. It's okay. What I'm going to do, I'm going to type um, await fetch uh, API hello. So we have a top level await there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to type const response and I'm going to console log my response. And when I get back, there we go. We see that my front end called my back end automatically. And it called the API folder with the endpoint I have created in there. See that in the same application, we can do full stack operation because we can have a front end and a back end. So it can be very useful. If we continue, we see that down there, we've got a server root option and it is written file inside the server API are automatically prefixed with API in their root. Yes, that's what happened here when I type slash API slash hello, which is the name of my file. Hello is, of course, the name of the endpoint. I got an API there uh, in my URL. Maybe I don't want it. So for adding server routes without API prefix, you can instead put them into server routes directory. So let's get back and at server here, I'm going to create a new folder called roots. And in there, I'm going to copy paste my hello.ts that I got there. However, I need to change the code of this file. So I'm going to get back there and I'm going to type hello world from roots folder. I'm going to save and now I'm going to get back. And instead of having API hello up there, what I'm going to type is just slash hello and it will work exactly the same. However, the difference here is that I didn't return a JSON, I just returned a simple string. If I would like to return a JSON, I could do exactly the same as I did in the API folder. So back in my roots folder now, I'm going to just open these brackets this way. Hello from roots folder. And I'm going to save, and I'm going to get back. I'm going to type again and there we go i got my json there we just saw two ways of creating server endpoint on Node.js. we saw the api folder which will prefix all your endpoint with slash api slash otherwise if you want to create root without the api slash you can put your endpoint inside uh, the roots folder your file, they look like they export a default define event handler method. And inside, every time you can provide operation, you can trigger actions, whatever. But every time you have to return at the end the result of your endpoint. You know me, I try to give you all the best practice all the time. When you are creating a file like this, it's creating actually an endpoint. And this endpoint will take the name of your file. Well, try to be concise every time you are going to create some endpoints. The name of the endpoint should be really logic and follow some pattern. Here, what we do, we are creating a hello root. And this root is supposed to have a method. The method can be post, get, patch, delete, whatever. So the best practice that I want to give you now is to actually always put a, a suffix at your root. Here we have a root hello and the method is supposed to be get. So I'm going to type get. And now we understood that um, actually this root is supposed to be a get method. So if you are going to try to post to this root, it's not gonna work because the suffix is now get. When you put just hello.ts, it's like you are doing anything you want. So remember in Node.js, or if you don't know, in Node.js, when you are creating an app, you can specify the method by typing app.get, app.post, app.patch, and then you provide an action. Here, what it does actually, without putting a, a suffix, it does an app.all. It means that it's going to receive any request 
depending on the method. So the best way is always to specify. Of course, if you get a post, instead of get, you're going to put a post. If you get a delete, you're going to put a delete, etc., etc. 